Hello, welcome back to the Wahoo Warrior channel. I'm going to finally take some time and do a little bit of a breakdown of Bolt Action 2nd Edition. I did a video when I first got my book and uh, went over some of the changes, but it never got posted. Uh, had a little, had some uh, technical difficulties, and it's actually good that it didn't because I was able to play a demo game and then another match with 2nd Edition and tinker around with some miniatures and uh, I think I have a little better understanding of some of the rules uh, that have changed. Obviously, I, I don't know every nuance of every rule, but I'm just going to go over some of the changes. I have to say, one of the first things uh, I was really happy that Warlord took the time to clarify many small aspects ahead of time. Uh, let's say when we get to the template, one inch template. One inch templates and models need to be one inches apart. You could conceivably say that you could never hit two models. They specifically say that you do hit, always hit two models if they're one inch apart. So basically the one inch template would be between the two models. So little things like that they clarify. Uh, they clarify like uh, the snap two order very well, like uh, Eunice Assault and Transport very well. Uh, I, like, I like how they took a little time and uh, kind of put those things out for clarification. I'm very happy so far with the second edition changes. I think everything that I thought was broken in bolt action is now fixed and there's much more balance. Uh, so, very exciting. So, no, one first quick change. Uh, medics, they have the new Geneva Convention rule. They can't claim objectives anymore. Uh, they cannot shoot other people. So, they're just there to be a medic. There's that's one small change. In the description of units, they have uh, fanatics now. Uh, it used to be the, the the Soviets can or the Soviets the SS could upgrade to fanatics, and it's only against shooting. Now fanatic rule, uh, some more similar to the Japanese one, where you actually get uh, that applies in shooting too. So you can't ever be broken from damage unless you're down to your last man. So that's nice. I think that makes three points a little bit more better. They also clarify stubborn in the unit descriptions. Talk about gun shields. Gun shields now provide one higher than your normal rating for the extra protection. I like that. I did not like the gun shields being a six up. Uh, just thought that, that was too powerful. So that will actually encourage you to take better stuff. Instead of taking like a inexperienced uh, or maybe a, a regular team or gun you might want to actually take a, a veteran so uh, you get what you pay for that type of thing gives you a little extra protection plus one that's nice another little small rule change they had a it's called turret jam uh, so basically if you take a I always call them glancing hit but it's actually if you get your armor matched and then you take a damage roll and you stay alive. Then you roll on a six, you, your turret can jam. I think it's a quirky little, kind of a fun little rule. I think that would be, it would make some games where that would be interesting. And then the, in the Band of Brothers starter set, they actually put some turret jam tokens. So that's a little, little minor little switch that could be fun in game. At full strength. Uh, at full strength is a neat little rule. It's basically encouraging people to take full squads. So if your squad has been every man allocated up to its allowance, some squads are smaller and some squads are bigger depending on your uh, nationality. But if it's a full strength squad and you would fail a activation check because of pins on you and nobody's dead, you would get to re-roll that failed activation check. And at first I thought, well, that could be handy uh, every now and then, but uh, Ken had posted on my YouTube uh, that uh, that actually rule also applies to coming in from reserves. So that is actually pretty nice. So if you take a full squad and buy the entire thing and you go take an activation check to come in and you're at full strength, you get to re-roll it if you fail it, even without any pins on you at all. Doesn't say anything about pins, it's just activation checks. So that could be pretty handy. Uh, I've, I know I've had a game 
or two where I've had a full squad that catch a pin or maybe two pins and then they they fail. The other thing could be uh, on prep bombardment if you have full 10-man squads on the board and you take two or so pins from a prep bombardment and you want to rally turn one it always sucks if you fail that first rally check because now uh, rally is much easier I'll get into that actually I'll just go ahead and cover a little bit of that now so now rally uh, is you ignore pin markers so if you're rallying and uh, you uh, would try to pass needing a, these are regular needing a nine it'd be a seven and you fail and like oh rats or activate or do anything let's say but a rally uh, you get to re-roll so you, you would actually be rolling on nines you ignore pin markers on rally so rally's got way more powerful you're going to see infantry units staying in the game much more I know if you've played bolt action you've had a squad that, that somehow in one turn caught three or four pins and then they end up just going down the rest of the game uh, so now you can rally on your base well actually it's more powerful than base because if you have a leader he, he does get to give his modification up to obviously a maximum of 10 uh, but you just ignore pins uh, speaking of down order down order now is way more powerful uh, down order can give you uh, gives you minus two to be hit and that is really big if you think about it uh, minus two to be hit on a down order is a lot of times somebody shooting you on sevens the other thing that it does if you decide to stay in down for whatever reason at the end of the turn uh, just like normal instead of removing one pin you now remove d3 pins so that's two mechanics that have helped clear rallies and then the third mechanic that actually helps clear rallies is uh, if you would roll uh, snake eyes on an activation check and you have pins it's basically like insane courage and you get to automatically rally uh, d6 plus one pins so three more mechanics added to the game to clear pins and I like that I do like that it, it, it there's always a chance of failure but you can spend your turns having your guys get reordered and get back in the fight in future turns so that's nice <clears throat> another rule that they added in the terrain section is what's called dense terrain uh, it also applies to smoke you no longer you don't have to worry about two inches into it or anything a lot of people use their train similar to the smoke rule which obstructed line of sight so now basically that if we as players say that this is a dense piece of terrain whether we make it rough ground or or able to go through it normal if we say this is dense we're assuming that it's so covered up with brambles and brush that it makes seeing through it impossible so now you just worry about the the footprint of the of the thing if it fight, takes a line of sight across any of it that unit can't see and they, they have a nice diagram in the video if you're in it, you can be seen and see out of it. If you're outside of it uh, and somebody's on the other side, you can't see them. It makes it very simple. I like that addition of dense terrain when it applies to smoke and other terrain features. They make a couple uh, formation clarifications for your infantry. They have to be one inch apart. Uh, that's the same. Uh, but they do add that you must Main, you know, you, you have to maintain that. So you have a more than an inch. You have to spend an activation check. You have to, you have to basically advance or run to correct that the first time they activate. Uh, it keeps people from just kind of like, oh, well, because and, and I've done it in friendly games where like, uh, so you got this and you got a light machine gun and something else here. Got and like, where uh, these guys are special. They have submachine guns and they go, well, I'll take these guys out. Well now you're gonna have to you need, you have to really you can't just kind of go and then I'll just move these guys over and you, they kind of clean that language up a little bit because some people do like to play you know tournaments and such and they like it to be even for everybody that uh, if you get uh, say a sniper shot in this situation right here and you've got a submachine gunner here and say an NC over here. I see the opportunity. I'm going to take a sniper shot at this guy. I'm going to sniper that guy, and I'm able to kill him. I know my opponent has to advance or run to fix that problem now because they they have less than an inch, or they have more than an inch 
in their unit cohesion. They don't do it right away, they have to use an activation to do it. Now they can still advance and fire, uh, or they could run as long as they get their unit, but, but it's just a small thing that could come in handy, especially if people are stringing their guys out more uh, to avoid those templates, which we'll get into shortly. Shape charge. Shape charge no longer suffers the minus one to hit for being a shape charge. So they just got much more powerful. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty pretty big deal. Uh, especially when you're looking at the Panzerfaust for the German, the short range stuff. We almost always had to move to fire it. Uh, the Piat as well. Uh, Panzerstrecks and Bazookas, they got a little bit better. Uh, small change, but big difference because Panzer Shrek's were 80 points, I believe, for a regular. It's like, man, I can almost buy an armor car for that, and we'll, we'll, I'll be hitting on better than sixes. So now it's something that, uh, as a German player, I might take a Panzer Shrek. Definitely Panzer Foss got better, so that's great. Uh, and then Piots and Bazookas, everything. So much more value. So that's. Good change, I think, for me playing German over any army because I like to take a few of those. Uh, the squad base, squad base loaders. Now I'm kind of making some loaders for my guys. Uh, it does designate a guy has to be the the loader, and he has to stay next to the the support weapon, the the light machine gun. Because uh, I know I used to take advantage of that in the past, where I have to say a. NCO with a submachine gun and I'd be at 24 inches of range I would just have him help the light machine gun and never actually said so now you cannot do that so that's a small little thing but I think it's sensible uh, if for some reason that particular guy would die the light machine gun would suffer a minus one uh, I mean he could conceivably I guess but uh, Another change is to flamethrowers. Flamethrowers now roll to hit. They ignore all cover. Uh, it does not say that they ignore movement penalty, and it does not say they ignore range penalties. Uh, they ignore cover and they ignore down orders. So you're usually going to be hitting on fours. Uh, they run out of fuel on ones now. I think it was ones or twos before. So I put a nice little balance to flamethrowers. <clears throat> Obviously, if you're standing here at the end of your turn and you activate next turn, you're hitting on uh, twos because you're less than three inches away. Uh, if you run up to here, like six inches, you moved four, long range, five. Uh, if you run up to point blank, or actually you would be at point blank at six too, so fours, so you're hitting on fours. You're always hitting on fours or better, basically, if you're in range. Uh, you can now, uh, well, speaking of flamethrowers, so a separate rule is that if your if your if your guns are out of range on a stand and shoot a stand and shoot that's fantasy on a reactionary fire for a charge let's say these guys charge him and he's say eight inches away in the past you'd have to fire right away and it does say you fire right away which is good because that was always a question do I leave the cover uh, do I do this when do you fire me and now now you fire when your weapons in range so a flamethrower can reactionary fire on infantry that can be brutal so you don't want to charge a flamethrower which makes sense uh, speaking of you know, we'll get into some close combat stuff and uh, ambush along that line ambush got much more powerful I think I'll talk about that here shortly uh, LMGs LMGs are now 36 inch range so that's nice uh, they have a rate of fire of 4 so the German version will be five with the buzzsaw rule. Medium machine guns are a rate of five. So 36 inch range, rate of fire of five. So that's a little better. So that's a lot of rate of fire five out of machine guns. Uh, not in the second edition book. Well, actually it is. The German buzzsaw rule now applies to their vehicles. So that'll give them six shots from their infantry based ones and six shots out of their vehicle machine guns. That's nice for the Germans and the buzzsaw rule. I like I like this, I like the five, uh, makes them much more viable. Uh, I think a lot of people want to take a 36 inch range team because it's so iconic. So now you can without feeling like a fool. Airplanes, uh, 
back in the second or the first edition, uh, air observers were the bane of many people's existence. Uh, the Americans would get an extra one, and that was brutal. The way the rules were that you'd have to take your pins and then get to shoot at airplanes, maybe. Uh, they made AA way more powerful against airplanes. They made airplanes uh, weaker, thus by making other people have a chance to defend against them. So now it encourages you to take some AA, some kind of anti-aircraft, uh, whether it's machine guns or an AA gun. Uh, now you um, pick, a, pick your spot and all that stuff just like the same and mark your template or mark your 18 inches away. Now all flak is to shoot as long as they're in range and they're hitting on fives. Uh, no other modifiers, no range modifier, you know, uh, pin, do pins, I believe pins modify. <clears throat> so unless you have, don't have any pins on her, does it? May just be fives. I have to look. But uh, you only need to get three hits on it now, hitting on fives. Uh, if you hit it with an HE weapon, like say a light auto cannon, and you do multiples, it does the same as HE versus units in buildings, so it's basically D3. So yeah, it's a lot easier to ward them off, and it's before pins are allocated. Uh, also, the pin range now is six inches around the airplane marker, wherever you put it, and it's six inches around the target. Uh, so it took that 12 inch bubble and moved it into two spots. So when you're picking your target, you get, when you, where you put your token, you may be putting it in a higher risk, trying to get pins on some stuff, as well as the attacking the target. Uh, I like that change. Um, be interested to see uh, if people still bring airplanes. I would, if I was the American player, I would just probably wait till turn three or four to start bringing it in, because uh, they do, they do still pack a punch. It's just you have a chance to ward them off. So now I would, if I was an American player, try to kill the anti-aircraft assets, and get an idea of where everything is on the board, and then bring my airplane into more of a safe spot to support me not just win me the game in two turns so that's a nice change and talk about HE I know that was before it came out one of the templates was the big uh, watch word uh, I looked over the when I first read it when I first read the rule on HE I was a little upset that you still do multiple pins to armor until I read the rally rules uh, now I don't care because it used to just infuriate me when me two medium howitzers never knock out a tank, they just pin it down to you know eight pins and you couldn't and it was just out of the game. Uh, so now you can still do that. You're delaying if you don't knock the tank out, you know it can rally on its turn and we can play it can play a nice little cat and mouse balance game. I think that's great. The templates are fine with me. Uh, you still roll to hit as normal. Uh, and you don't break a template out even until you roll a hit. Uh, it won't slow the game down that much. As far as uh, squad spacing, uh, you're not going to want them all globbed up like that because of basically a, I think this is a three inch template uh, would you know get a lot more guys. You want to space them out. There may be times though where you need to bunch up a little bit to to get in a nice piece of protection. With down order, you know you can still go down. Uh, if it's indirect, you have to declare down. Uh, if you do, if you you would go, well, how many guys got hit? If you rolled a hit, how many guys got hit? And then have it. Uh, if they're shooting straight fire at you, you go down to, to avoid the hit. That's fine. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't think it's the end of the world by any means. Uh, what it really does do is give you, if you've got two units close to each other, and you roll a hit on this unit. I could place this template like this, so I can put pins on both units. It's not going to kill tons of guys by doing that, but I can try to suppress and get pins down. So I, I like the change. Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, they made uh, they made some small changes to the D3s. Now you do do like old school, where a medium howitzer did two D6 hits. You do do that to units in buildings. So, you remember that problem people used to complain about with houses, uh, full, full buildings? Uh, you do not want to be in a building anymore. Because HE can fire at that. You get plus one protection for a building now. It's not sixes to kill, just like the gun shield. And then, 
if uh, somebody's shooting at you, they're just trying to hit the building. So if you're in the building and you have a unit in there, they're trying to hit the building and they just use the modifiers to hit it. So if it's a hard building, they don't use the hard cover. Because uh, basically you don't want to be in a building in an HE shell. It's going to make the building become projectiles. So uh, you're usually going to be hitting on threes or fours and devastating the units that are in there because you're going to be rolling the old school 2d6 or d6 or whatever uh, hits with no extra protection and all that jazz uh, so yeah buildings will have a place in infantry versus infantry but if somebody brings out a big gun you do not want to be in their line of sight so i like that i like that change quite a bit actually all right there's been a big change to headquarter unit and i really like it i think it's going to be awesome uh, headquarters units now used to they used to just be kind of hide in the back run around and give somebody a bonus they can still do that they still give their command radius bonus uh, you know second lieutenant plus one first lieutenant plus two etc etc now you also have an order called snap two and I like how they detail it how it works in the book uh, there, there's not going to be any you have to use plan ahead of time and uh, to use it very effectively but you can't use it when you're in a vehicle uh, you can't use it uh, after you've moved and stuff you have to do it right away so basically what the snap 2 does is if I elect to give my lieutenant an order let's say I give him a run order before I activate before I execute that I can snap two. If he's a first lieutenant, I can give up to six inches away two other units at an activation order. I may give them an advance, and I may give them a run order to assault. And I go ahead and act, do those in, in the order I want. Once I've done it, you know, obviously they've gone. So you can go, do the assault, and then run my lieutenant. So you get this little burst of activity. He also gives his command radius a plus two. Uh, I think it's super neat. Uh, you're not going to be able to race up in a vehicle and then snap to and everybody pour out. But on the next turn, like after they just got out of vehicles, you will be able to do that type of stuff. I think it's going to make lieutenants very cool and make them much more part of the game. I think it's going to be really a really neat change to the game. Uh, like say you had a squad that's heavily pinned you snap too, they can go ahead and rally right away, you know, and then you can do your other things. But in the past, it used to be, oh, I have to wait here to see if uh, they're going to rally. I could do that. And then on his run order, they just gave him run him to over here to this squad who's going to need the, his plus two on their own activation. So it's going to be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, speaking of that, I might as well talk about snipers. Snipers got more powerful. Uh, they got a little bit of a limitation, but they got actually more powerful. They're basically hitting on two ups. They ignore all modifiers and they get the plus one. So down doesn't help. Small team doesn't help. Range doesn't help. I don't know why, but range doesn't help. They have a 36 inch range when they're firing as a sniper. I believe it's 36, 36 or 32. And uh, uh, they do have a minimum range now though, where they don't get their sniper scope. Uh, so they're basically just shooting as a normal rifleman or maybe a submachine gun if you had an American one but uh so now you need to get up close to a sniper and turn him into a normal rifleman so they don't kill any better you know so if you take your uh, leaders at veteran they'll, and, they're, and your small teams at veteran you know you'll be a lot safer so that's a interesting change another change similar to the down order change is the order act uh, is the ambush uh, I I like going down. I like ambushed. I'm glad they've been given, and I like this lieutenant one because it gives you more options for how you're running your army and what you're doing in the in the battle. It used to just be fire or advance, fire or advance. Now ambush is much more. I think it's more powerful. You go into ambush with a unit. You place them in ambush. Normal rules apply. You can fire them at any point when something moves in your field of fire. Uh, that hasn't changed. But what has changed, well, also what hasn't changed, and a lot of people forget, is that you can always go down on an ambush. And now it's minus two. So uh, don't don't forget that. It's important. Uh, 
so now basically, and you've done, probably had games where p things have moved in front of you and you elected not to fire your ambush because you're more worried about a different squad. And you've kind of dictated or kept your opponent back a little bit. And then they end up not moving in front of you with what you thought they were going to. And you're like, eh, I wasted a, wasted that turn in ambush, sort of. I mean, it helped. It kept you from coming out here. But like, now on a, on a four, five, or six, when you go to pick up your order dice, you can, you can always leave them in ambush. That's fine. Or you can pick up the order dice and put it back in the bag at the end of the turn. And on a four, five, or six, that unit can now fire the target as if it's giving a fire order. That is pretty sweet. If you have say medium machine gun team and you're worried about somebody getting close or a fire team in a, in a nice piece of cover uh, and you go into ambush at the end of the turn you've got a 50-50 chance that you didn't waste it if, and just go ahead and take that pot shot that you wanted to do on a fire order anyway I think that's pretty big pretty big I think you're going to have some very interesting chess match situations in turns 3 and 4 where we've got Germans next to these guys here, and uh, he's too big for me to assault. Uh, well, I'm gonna snap two, I'm gonna place them in ambush, and then I'm gonna uh, run order these guys. We're gonna do a close combat, and then those guys are left. And ambush now can trigger on any kind of movement, so you can trigger on uh, a, an escape move, on a consolidation move. So let's say that happens and I charge these commandos in and these Germans kill all the commandos and he consolidates over there. I can then activate that ambush and fire. We're going to wait to see if he, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I think it's going to be neat. Uh, with skilled players getting the most out of their order dice and their units, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, might as well talk about uh, tough fighters while we're talking about it. Tough fighters finally got nerfed down. Uh, obviously, uh, my biggest thing that I had with Tough Fighters is that it was such an option for so many armies for one point per guy, and it gave you two attacks per guy in close combat. You could take a unit of eight guys, eight veteran infantry, and have 16 attacks. Your opponent would never have a chance to even fight back. Uh, Tough Fighters now is, all it does is it allows you to re-roll successful wounds. So basically, I've got a unit of uh, nine commandos there. In the, in the past, I would roll 18 attacks. <clears throat> Even if we were going simo, the odds of me losing anything are uh, absurd. Uh, but if I go first, you never, there, you wouldn't have a prayer. So now I'd get, I have a nine unit of nine commandos. Four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and see a lot of times people, myself included, <clears throat> would take a unit of six commandos because I had 12 close combat attacks and I was veterans. I, I won almost all of my combats just with six. Let's say I have a unit of nine and I charge into that German squad over here that I was just talking about, this big big 10 man squad. Uh, they do their, they can like to do their reactionary fire and whatnot and they might pick off a guy or whatever. But in, traditionally, uh, that's a foregone conclusion that I win that battle, uh, especially if you're regulars, because I would roll. I'd be rolling 18 or 16 dice, and the odds of me not getting eight dead guys uh, are pretty low. Now, even if I got six, I went first, and you've got four attacks back if you were a 10 man squad. Uh, so six always beats four. So you couldn't even if you rolled all fives and sixes, I still win and you're destroyed. Now, I don't know. It's a little more. So now I'll be rolling my eight attacks, needing fours. One, two, 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 two. Got a pretty decent roll. I got five dead guys. And I get to re-roll these. Uh-oh. I only got one more. So I killed. I still killed. I ended up killing five total. Or six. Whatever. But... It gives, uh, if, you, you know, if you're behind a wall and you're going Simo, uh, successful hits gets to go against. It, re, it also, what it does, is, I think it does, it encourages larger squads, which I think is what bolt action was intended for. I thought, I think when they first designed season, the first edition, that they assumed people would take 10-man squads or 8-man squads, mainly 10-man squads. Uh, <clears throat> encourages you to put that extra, maybe submachine gun and uh, 
on your NCO and one other guy because they'd get two shots on the reactionary fire and then they would also get to re-roll their close combat. Uh, I like the change. It makes all the nationalities uh, ironed out. Uh, Gurkhas are the only one that I can think of. It makes fanatics much more stronger uh, because now people can, will, you'll actually be able to fight to the death as opposed to just being creamed in one turn and not even be able to strike back. Uh, uh, yeah, like I would say Gurkhas are still powerful uh, for one point, for the same cost as a veteran infantry. I don't know why they have that special rule. Uh, but, you know, I, on that commando attack, I'd have nine guys, a uh, half round down, I end up having four. Ten minutes squad, I have five attacks. You just have to whittle the Gurkhas down, just like you used to. But at least I think you have a fighting chance if you're defending a piece of terrain uh, of of punishing the Gurkha squad uh, or any, or commandos or anybody and turning them into a not combat effective unit by grinding them down. If I take, uh, heck, if I was a Polish player, like 20 inexperienced infantry, put them in the way of those Gurkhas, uh, I would at least be able to stab a few of them before, uh, for the probably cheap or whatever. There's just options. Uh, but, so that's about, that's about it for the rules that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm very happy with the second edition. Like I said, I've, I have very limited game, actual game. Most of it's uh, conceptual in my head. Uh, Meeting machine guns and whatnot got more powerful. So it puts a little more power into some of the, like the early war tanks and stuff, which were kind of a little bit overpowered. However, uh, with anti-tank guns, I mean, with howitzers not being able to knock out medium and heavy tanks uh, because they're just going to put the pins on them and then you'll rally and start going again, uh, I think you're going to see people needing to take the medium and heavy tanks to knock out other people's tanks. You're going to need to get those pins on something and finish the job, whether it's with Panzerfaust or getting an anti-tank gun up on close on the side or the rear you're gonna have to finish the job on those heavy tanks or they will be behemoths for the whole game it used to be uh, like a bug eater that guy brought that 10 armor heavy howitzer soviet tank i was fortunate enough to get uh three pins on it with a medium howitzer and it failed two activation checks well now if i hit it with like two medium howitzers and get five six pins on it, it used to be it was out of the game now he's just going to do a rally on his base, rallies on your base, so you rally on a nine, and then he's back in the fight, and you're screwed. So you gotta finish the job with anti-tank. So I think you'll be seeing some medium tanks with medium anti-tank guns, and you'll be seeing some heavy tanks uh, to see if people bring that anti-tank asset. I think you'll be seeing people bring AA to keep the aircrafts away. I think you'll be seeing lists, people writing lists that they don't, that they never did before. I mean, German lists, honestly, used to be uh, veterans with assault rifles. Oh, assault rifles are 18 inch range now, so they cut the range down on them. I think that's pretty cool. They're still good, but 18 inch range. So anyway, yeah, it used to be German list Puma, uh, Stu 42, and veterans with assault rifles. And that's the only list you could take to a tournament that you felt like you weren't being a fool. Now, not so much. The Stu 42 might not be able to knock out the armor like you wanted to. Uh, the template actually is weaker against infantry. It used to be 2d6 and your unit's gone. Now you string out, you go down, minus 2 to be hit. Uh, you take a hit and that bad boy is only doing like 2 wounds to you. Uh, you're still in the fight. Take those pins, rally, go. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. I'm really looking forward to Operation Sting. It's gonna be a lot of great players. I know John Stentz is gonna be there. Uh, Paul Buckholds, uh, that Seamus Hammerin. I've never played against him, but I've seen good stuff. His modeling is awesome. Uh, and I don't mean to be in, leave anybody off the list, but I, I, I saw the list and I was like, I know some of the names just from uh, following other pages and stuff. And it's gonna be some. Uh, they, there's an American player that I look back and he won the year before and i think he placed in the top three the year before that uh so obviously uh God, i can't remember his name but uh you know who you are if you're watching this and obviously you know it's a good player and 
ripping it out. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, it's going to be an Ally vs. Access event, but I'm getting off track. But anyway, I'm excited. Hope you're excited. Uh, I got some modeling to do. I got some painting to do. I've got to go. Thanks for watching.